stirring memories of decades of sectarian violence. Rioting returns to the streets of Northern Ireland. It follows a decision to restrict the flying of the British flag. Loyalist paramilitaries are being accused of fanning the flames of unrest. Hello there, thanks for joining us. I'm Shuri Ghosh, you're with Inside Story. For nearly a week, there have been running battles between police and protesters in Northern Ireland. Loyalists are furious over a decision to fly the Union flag at Belfast City Hall only on designated days. Their anger has seen politicians attacked, police pelted with petrol bombs and rocks, and property destroyed. The issue has raised tensions between those who want to maintain links to Britain and the Republicans who want a united Ireland. Loyalists say their very identity is under threat. Hasm Seeker reports. Britain's Union flag flutters again over Belfast City Hall, but only to mark a royal birthday. Last month, the City Council decided to end the practice of flying the flag every day. Now it only goes up on special occasions. That decision prompted six straight nights of unrest in the Northern Irish capital. Loyalists flung fireworks, bottles and bricks at police in the east side of the city. They say taking down the flag is an assault on their identity and their traditional links with the United Kingdom. It's vital that those who are engaging in this violent conduct stop it, that these, um, this lawless violence ceases because it's, it's intolerable to see this kind of thing happening on the streets of Belfast. The attacks on police officers are disgraceful. Um, the way forward um, to deal with sensitivities and concerns about identity and about flags and symbols is through the political leadership sitting down together and having a dialogue. Many loyalists in the British province feel the current government has served the interests of Republicans who want a united Ireland. Politicians from both sides say this is all being stirred up by extremists in the loyalist camp. A number of politicians have received death threats over the past few days. And there's concern this could threaten Northern Ireland's fragile economy and scare away investors. Northern Ireland has largely stayed on a peaceful course for 15 years now. Most are hoping it stays that way. Hazem Sika, Inside Story. So a lot of issues to discuss. Let's bring in my guests today in Belfast, Sinn Féin councillor Niall O'Donnell. Joining us from London, Sammy Wilson, a member of parliament for the Democratic Unionist Party. Also in Belfast, historian and author of The Peace Process and Endgame, Eamon Malley. Gentlemen, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, Niall, let me start with you because unions say that uh, this is all Sinn Féin's fault, that this vote was bulldozed through by Sinn Féin. Why did you want to push this vote through? I think it's important to remember, uh, surely, that this was a democratic vote taken by a democratically elected institution, i.e. Belfast City Council. Um, the reason that the decision was made by the majority of elected councillors was that, uh, I suppose, in the current reality, in the current post-peace process and uh, in the midst of uh, a political process, is that Belfast City uh, is a changed city. Uh, it isn't. Uh, the city that ma uh, many of your viewers would remember from their TV screens 10 uh, or 20 years ago. I don't think the, the violence that we've seen is representative of that uh, broadly, the majority of that uh, new Belfast. So there are many different makeups in the city. There are many uh, of us who uh, affirm our allegiance to uh, the Irish nation and our very legitimate and democratic aspirations to have a united Ireland. But of course there are many new traditions and, and many cultures uh, who I think uh, make up uh, a great wealth uh, and benefit to the city of Belfast. So the decision to fly the okay, Union flag, okay, remember the Union flag will... But the Belfast City Council well, sorry, the leader, flag, the, flag, the, the leader of Belfast City Council, uh, Jim McVeigh, uh, Sinn Féin councillor, says, you know, he respects British culture, but if you lead a vote against the Union flag, then it's going to be seen as an attack on British culture. Surely that's an obvious well, thing. The, well, 
well, th this this wasn't a vote against British culture. What this was for uh, was a vote for equality. It was a vote to bring Belfast into the 21st century. Well, and this, uh, City Hall is the civic heart of Belfast. Not only should it uh, represent all of us, it should also reflect uh, the makeup of Belfast. So the Union flag is flying at Belfast City Hall uh, for designated days. That's and Sammy's in London. That's currently the the procedure over Buckingham Palace. It only flies on designated days. Uh, my flag doesn't fly uh, over Belfast City Hall. And the notion that Belfast City Hall yeah, doesn't Belfast reflect City Hall is the in British the United or Kingdom. Unionist tradition it's in is the a United Should Kingdom. Uh, not, I but, yeah. but of course, it's 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 in a part uh, of what you say the United Kingdom, which is still contested and which allows democratically and legitimately and p through peaceful, uh, exclusively peaceful means, uh, Republicans uh, to pursue their democratic object objectives okay. uh, and those legitimate objectives. And this this Sheila, is about we, creating a city well, Let me bring Sammy about. in because I, I, I can see mm -hmm. that he's, uh, mm -hmm. he, he wants yeah. to say something. What, what, what's your response to that, yeah. Sammy? I mean, let, let me just, let me, well, uh, th there's two responses I have to it. First of all, there was no demand by the citizens of Belfast for the flag to be removed. In fact, the council carried out a survey of people from all uh, sections of the community in Belfast, and over 80% of them indicated that first of, either they didn't care that the flag flew, they didn't know that the flag flew, or they wanted the flag to fly. So there really wasn't any groundswell of support. And you know, I think we've got to put this into perspective. This really is an attempt and it started off as an attempt by Sinn Féin, who, you know, have had to, um, as a result of the pressures that, which were on them uh, politically and militarily, have had to accept that Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. They've had to accept Sammy, the police service in Northern moment. Ireland, and indeed, uh, and, and indeed, Sammy, and so indeed, uh, um, as a result as of... As Niall says, uh, the, this, no, well, this no, was me, a democratic you, you vote. A it was a time. democratic give, vote. Give, well, no, and it, it's no, it, it didn't. It started off. It started off as a result of Sinn Féin trying to cover the embarrassment that they have of now accepting that Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Their, their ministers have to and have, have met with the Queen, shaken hands with the Queen. They've accepted the police who they used to blow up and kill. They sit I at, thought you would have thought Stormont that a good thing, Sammy. They pass laws which require, which, require their, which require the royal assent. I do think it's a good thing. But what I think is a bad thing is that in order to cover up that embarrassment, Sinn Féin then start poking the sectarian fires that there were smouldering in the city. And we have had, as a result of that, we have had the, the, the violence that we have seen over the last number of weeks. Well, let, let, let me bring that. in Eamon here. And I think that unionists who have engaged in that, I think that, un, I think that unionists who have engaged in that have not appreciated that in this year of 2012, we have mo had more evidence of the symbols of our Britishness displayed in Northern Ireland, the connection of our Britishness displayed in Northern Ireland, and you know. Sammy, that that let me get, let me get a response from that Eamon because Eamon, so Eamon, why, why people have reacted in the way that they have. Eamon, Ni Sammy, Niall says it's a true. different Belfast, well, well, and uh, Sammy is saying uh, that it's an attack on our identity. Well, what's going on in Northern Ireland? Well, uh, let's state a few constants here. Uh, Sammy Wilson says that essentially Republicans have been defeated in the sense that they've had to accept a partition parliament at Stormont, they've had to accept the police in Northern Ireland and the justice system etc and that they have been shaking hands with the Queen and meeting members of the royal family. Now at the same time he's saying that the Britishness uh, with which he wants to align and identify belonging to unionism is being eroded. That's uh, Sammy's position. This city is changing. The dynamics are changing in this city. This city now, according to the latest census, uh, throws up the statistic that it is essentially going nationalist or nationalist in makeup. Northern Ireland, totally, globally, has 48% Protestant makeup and 45% Catholic make up. So what you're witnessing now is shifting sands population wise, dynamics wise in this city. But it doesn't matter. The bottom line is whoever is the bigger party, the dominant force, whether Catholic or Protestant, there is an onus 
And I think this is a, a well accepted fact of life here within the Good Friday Agreement, within the St Andrews Agreement, the basis upon which we have a power sharing administration in Northern Ireland, and it's this, that there must be mutual respect for the culture and all manifestations of the other side. Now, what we're getting so, here sorry is to interrupt, Amy, but abuse, on that ab point, abuse. On that point that you've just made, uh, then, um, isn't Sammy right in saying that an action like this, a vote against the flying the union flag over, over the, the council, is poking the fires of sectarianism? There is an argument for that. Yes, there is an argument for that. There's an argument regarding how that was handled. Now, I'm sure the Niall O'Donnellers of this world will challenge today the arbitrary, unilateral decision of uh, the Minister here for Housing, who has undone the housing executive, for example. That was a unilateral decision. Now, the housing executive here was established over 40 years ago to guarantee fair allocation of social housing, public housing, to Catholics and nationalists in Northern Ireland. That's unilaterally decided by a minister today. Was there a pulse taken? Was there a poll taken in the community? No. But people take decisions given their areas of responsibility, and I'm not depriving I wouldn't argue that uh, Nelson McCausland shouldn't unilaterally take that decision mm. if that's the way he feels and he's empowered as a minister. But people have to realise that there has to be mutual respect. It's not a one-way street. And those who are more powerful in any state, I think, there's a real onus on them to be mindful of the sensitivities and the sensibilities and the well-beings of the other. And I think the City Hall here is no different. The City Hall is predominantly nationalist or at least not a strongly pro-British so you agree, you agree with the, with the vote that was, was pushed through. You think it's right that the union flag only be flown on, on what, 17 days a year, is it? No, 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 that's, that's not... That's not, that's not for me to... I'm not going to opine about that. That's not an issue for me at all. I, I have lived in this city for 35 years. I have no trouble walking under any flag. There is only one flag, and it's the, it's the British flag. Now, I, I, I'm not going to start a row over it. I, I, I'm a constitutionalist. I'm not going to start a row over it. But there are people who feel very strongly about it, the lowering of it. It has raised tensions here. But remember one thing, Sheila. I was here in 1985 when the Anglo-Irish Agreement was signed. And the following year, there were thousands upon thousands upon thousands in every square inch of here, right at the City Hall. Those people aren't here anymore. This is not a mass movement issue, this flag at this moment in time. Now, the Protestant Union okay. community are hurt, but they're not moving en masse to make to kick up a dust. This is very East Belfast centric. Do you, do you, Sammy, do you agree with that? It's, it's a minority. This is a small minority uh, and it's being poked by you know, extreme loyalists. I, mean, I do, and I do for a number of reasons. Because first of all, I believe that the union, as I've explained, has never been safer than what it is at the moment. And we actually have Sinn Féin acquiescing in that. The population statistics indicate that whilst there may be 45% of the population uh, Roman Catholic, only 21% of them regard themselves as Irish. So more and more people are comfortable with that British identity. I believe that, uh, and as the largest party at Stormont, we have sought to do what we can to make the Catholic population feel at home in Northern Ireland. And indeed, it's significant that the only ministers who have been found guilty of discrimination by the courts have been Republican ministers, not Unionist ministers, because Unionist ministers have an interest in ensuring that the Catholic population are brought into um, the, the, the scope of um, the, the state and feel happy with the state. So, you know, I believe that the vast majority of unionists are comfortable with the current situation. However, I do believe that, as Eamon has said, and this falls to me as unionists as well, that uh, where parties are in a majority, they do have a responsibility not to poke at the sensitivities that there are within the population in Northern Ireland. Otherwise, you will get the reaction. I think that if you look actually at the, the, the trouble there has been, it has been very localised, though it has got far more media coverage than it desires. And as Finance Minister in Northern Ireland, I do not want to see 
the image which we have sought and worked very hard to promote in Northern Ireland to yeah. try and get to deal with the real issues of the economy, of creating jobs, etc. I don't want to see that destroyed. And therefore, I, I say it, and I've said it time and time again, in my own area I've met with people who are concerned. I have I've said to them, if you're going to protest, protest peacefully. You don't need to protest continually. Work with the police. And indeed, although East Antrim is one of the hardest or will Niall, be regarded as one Niall, of the hardest loyalist areas in let, Northern Ireland. I, I just want to pick up on that point, in, Sammy, because problem, that, that is problem. a really, really in, uh, interesting point. In fact, the, um, the, the, uh, the CBI in Northern Ireland says uh, jobs will be lost because some investors have already pulled out because of the damaging effect that these protests are having on Northern Ireland's image abroad. So, Niall, uh, Sammy is, is saying that, you know, the fault, the blame for this is because Sinn Féin is not uh, listening to the sensitivities that are uh, existing in Northern Ireland. No, no. Well, three points, and, and I actually resent that implication because I don't know if Sammy Wilson has been on the ground or any of his party colleagues have been on the ground in East Belfast to try and proactively uh, prevent and challenge those who would be engaged in this trouble. But I have, uh, and I continue uh, to play my part uh, on the ground at a cross-community level. But Sammy mentioned the issue of the census, and, and Sammy's happy to quote those statistics and those demographics, except, of course, when they relate to Belfast. And the reality is that Belfast is a changed city. And the demographics of Belfast have changed significantly from, uh, I suppose, he was Lord Mayor. Uh, last year when I was Lord Mayor, I was very proud and privileged to preside over a city that could attract things like the MTV European Music Awards, the Titanic Centenary uh, celebrations. This year we'll have the World Police and Fire Games, the second biggest uh, participatory sporting event uh, after the Olympics to be hosted here uh, in Belfast. And that's a good thing. And that's the message that we want to continue uh, to send around the world at Belfast is a better place. Belfast is uh, a chain city, but uh, I mean, you have a camera crew, uh, surely. You, you, you have a camera crew at City Hall. Uh, well, I didn't create the, the trouble, Sammy, and I'm not out on the street protesting at interfaces. Loyalist people are, and loyalist leaders and unionist leaders haven't challenged those people. They haven't told us the why they're at interfaces. They haven't told us why. No, we didn't create the conditions. The, crea the conditions have been created by the change we in Belfast City. Which, and let's bear in mind, let's bear in mind, Sammy, when you were running about the City Hall telling us Belfast says no. Thankfully, those days are long gone. They're buried in the past, and we have all moved on. And I'd like to think that unionism are, uh, in its right. political manifestation would tell the people on the ground protesting at interfaces and give them some positive leadership, take them uh, into the Belfast of 2013. Now, the reality is this, uh, Julie, you have a camera crew outside Belfast City Hall. I am prepared. Uh, to go down to Belfast City Hall and take you around that City Hall and show you the symbolism, the imagery, the flags that are flown inside that. I am an Irish citizen. I am an Irish Republican. I am, my first language uh, is the Irish language. The City Hall, by and large, although we have made some very small, modest pro progress, that City Hall doesn't reflect me and the majority of people like me okay. uh, in Belfast. So we have some way to go, and this, this is part and parcel of that. But the key thing is about, is about equality. It's about equality of treatment and reflection and representation for all of our citizens and respecting people who are British and respecting their tradition here, but also respecting those of us who are Irish and those of us who are neither. OK, gentlemen, let me bring in some uh, reaction that we've had to this um, this subject on our Facebook page. Uh, Khan Oron says sectarianism and sectarian violence were never gone. They will not end until a full British withdrawal and the establishment of a new political system in Ireland. Uh, Clint Derry says these British planters don't belong in Ireland. It's now time to face reality and leave. The Irish nat natives have spoken. Ireland for the Irish. And Ruari Magorian says nationalists in the north are no longer second class citizens. That's what unionists and loyalists hate. We will never go back to the days of unionist dominance and oppression. Uh, Eamon, is there, a, is there a fear that Northern Ireland could return to its more violent days? Is there a fear that this, this could escalate? No, no, no. I want to pick up something Sammy said. He's right about the potential deleter deleterious impact on inward investment here if this continues. I want to say something else as well. This violence, which we're witnessing for the past six nights, is being grossly inflated, inflated in a lot of cases by reporting involving young people who just haven't enough grey hair. We have lived through Northern Ireland for so long. This is not violence on the scale which we have known historically. 
This is a minor fracas which I think will burn out if common sense prevails. But aren't these the, protests, the, uh, the, right the protests have already said that they're going to continue and they're actually going to Dublin on Saturday. Isn't that just going to Yes, but be let, me contextual, let, let me let me con let me let me contextualize this. If if somebody responsible in the community can get a grip of this, this can be resolved. Now there are a number of constants here. The change in terms of the flying of the flag in the city hall i don't think that that would be legally rescinded secondly i don't think that those who voted to fly the flag on designated days will resign from that position but this is not an insoluble problem there can be a resolution to where we are Eamon, this is, is there no evidence though that the paramilitaries are involved isn't there isn't that what uh, the northern ireland Chief Constable has said that let the, me explain the UEF, that again. The UDF let me explain that again. Yeah. Let me explain this again. Let me just articulate on this here. The Chief Constable has been very specific saying there are individuals linked to the UVF in East Belfast. But this protest is not across Northern Ireland. It's very East Belfast centric. Now, there are UVF elements, according to the Chief Constable, involved, but the UVF is not homogeneous. The UVF is standing back and wondering, what are they going to do about these elements in East Belfast? OK, Sammy, let me ask you, the accusation is that, that Protestant well, leaders have played into the hands of Nationalist Republicans, that you've abandoned the Loyalists. What do you say to those accusations? Well, I, mean, I think that, at first of all, I agree with Eamon that this is very localised and I'm surprised at the media attention which it has got, but nevertheless we have got to live with that. Secondly, I don't believe that these areas have been abandoned. I mean, as I represented East Belfast for a long, long time. Uh, I know the area very well. I know the investment that's gone into it. I know that as Finance Minister in Northern Ireland, the amount of money which I have allocated towards education programmes, recently £30 million to deal with youth unemployment, the housing... So, so the, why the housing, are people so angry built a record at, at number can, of why, new why are social so housing? Why people so angry with you politicians that, then? Well, well, I mean, I think that first of all, there, there has been, and I mean, it's, it's not common, it's, it's not just uh, uh, in Northern Ireland. If, here in England, Labour MPs would tell you about the same problems that they're finding in many working class estates where there's uh, 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 people be, uh, not becoming involved in anything, where they're being dis they're dis disassociating with all of the kind of institutions, dropping out of education, dropping out of involvement in their communities, etc. It's a common problem, um, not just... Uh, in, in Northern Ireland but across uh, many uh, working class areas uh, in the United Kingdom. We have to work harder to convince people that first of all the union is safe, that secondly the social issues which uh, are occurring in these areas are being addressed, that resources are being put to them. That's my job as a politician. Uh, Niall, you're the, uh, the, well Sinn Féin is the, the, the majority party in, in, in Belfast. What, what are you going to do about this? Well, I mean, I, I think it's important to remember too, and to be fair uh, to the finance minister, that's right, there has been significant investment uh, as a result of locally uh, elected and locally devolved uh, institutions being uh, here. The reality is that those socio and economic problems are universal. The, the, the people uh, in the area that I come from face the same uh, problems, actually, if not more uh, than those in broader East Belfast. Uh, so, I mean, out of the top 40 electoral wards here in the the north of Ireland, the, the top 40 uh, poorest, 36 of them are in nationalist or Republican uh, electoral wards. So that is the reality. In Belfast, the top eight most depraved uh, electoral wards are uh, nationalist and Republican uh, constituencies uh, as well. What are Belfast City Council doing? Well, together, uh, all of the political parties for the first time came together last year to launch a £156 million investment plan uh, about uh, investing in our infrastructure, in our community infrastructure, in our physical infrastructure. We have a £20 million uh, leisure and sport and pitch okay, uh, strategy to try and support those. So that, that's the kind of practical measures when we come together and we work together. We can't solve these problems in isolation and no amount of singular forums uh, will do that. We have to do it all together. History has proven G that we gentlemen, can Gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there. It was a fascinating discussion and it went very quickly for me. Thank you very much indeed for taking part in today's discussion. My guests today, Niall O'Donnell, Sammy Wilson and Eamon Malley.
Now, just quickly, before we go, some reaction to yesterday's programme, which focused on social media and whether online posts should ever be censored. Uh, here's a brief look at what you tweeted. Tolsty says, social networks should be censored. It's becoming a bad influence to our children. Aafra says, I think the report tweet is certainly a reasonable argument. I'm sure Twitter can act on massly reported tweets. And finally, Palandrian639 says, hate messages can only be stopped with ethical values, not by blocking social media. Don't forget, you can uh, give me your opinions on today's show by tweeting me at hackhound or email inside story at aljazeera.net. Until next time, I'm Shiri Ghosh. Thanks for watching.